Welcome to track number six of Agree on the Way. You should read the final quest. You see when Rick Joyner, he saws a man in, on a very high throne in heaven. And he asked him, who is this man? So it's a beggar. And he said, oh, but you've seen this man many times. He said, ah. he said oh, you've even passed a comment about him before. And me? This high throne, this man? Oh, I've not seen him before. <laughs> he said, he's a beggar. A beggar that was there. And he said, you passed a comment. He said that this guy, they are rather driving people away from God. And this and that and that. And he made some comment. He knelt down and begged to forgive. A time to rend. A time to sow. A time to love. And a time to hate. There's a time to hate the devil. Hate the works of the devil. If you have any hate directed to the devil. And a time of war. And a time of peace. What profit hath he that laboreth? In that wherein he laboreth. You see, Solomon is still talking about the same thing. What is the use of all this work that we are doing? Huh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse 10. I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Amen. Is that song ready? He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work of God that God maketh from beginning to the end. Amen. Hallelujah. In his time, it will be well. I said in his time. It will be well. It's not easy. I stayed in my father's room. 14. Room 14. And I gave birth to two children there. With my house helps. Two house helps. (laughs) I, I was able to buy my first set of furniture. Only after about two to three years after. I married. And that is the same set of furniture that I'm still using in my house. Your situation is not too bad at all. (laughs) You see, that's what I'm saying. That When you look at me now, you can easily be deceived. So, you have to try to go backwards a bit and look at that. Because that's where some of you are. (laughs) Reverend Saki, do you remember my black chair? What happened to that black chair? After you used it all. No. When you come to my house and you sit on that chair before you realize you are down. It was a, it was a standard feature of my house. The, hand, the side comes off. And it was my, my sitting room. It was just part of the room. Yeah. That's it. And I was there. You are there. Very happy. Very happy. I remember one day somebody was preaching and I heard that he said oh, he was having a service and he held his phone and he was answering and so on. And I was criticizing the person in my mind and I'm also doing the same thing today. <laughs> it's a pity, I tell you. It's a pity. That's why when somebody said a oh, homosexual, they said, What do you think about? Oh, I don't think about anything. I don't think about anything at all. Why should I think? I don't think at all. A homosexual should a homosexual be a but oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't have to think about it. I don't want to know. As I'm pointing my finger at a homosexual. You see, homosexual is somebody who is looking for something and his eyes have not found and he's still searching. And all of us are still searching for things that we haven't found. We are homosexuals in other ways. 
natural affection. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? It is time to get better. I said it will get better. I said it will get better. Yeah, even now it's not so bad. It's not so bad. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> It's not good to criticize you. <laughs> Before you realize, you are commenting about yourself. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. I couldn't buy a fridge. I couldn't buy a fridge couldn't buy a fridge. The fridge that I had, my mother bought it for me. Couldn't buy a fridge. I couldn't buy a television. Oh yeah. I bought my first television many years later. I'm telling you something. I said in his time, he makes all things beautiful. If you rush yourself, you see, it's not easy to have things. And even when you have them, your eye will not be satisfied with the scene. And you will want more. Bigger ones. This one. This, that, 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 that. Oh, man. Yeah. Car. AA5469. <laughs> the church. You see, I remember my dream car. My dream car. You see, that's why earthly things is not good. Let me tell you my dream car. My dream car was Peugeot 405. to you and 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 we i really really wanted to buy see do you remember that car it was some we were going to buy what we tried we tried we tried we tried we're not able to buy 405 it was my dream see when you see me as i for i've left all such things i don't follow such things again you understand why (laughs) so when i look at pijo 405 Four or five, you know, they don't make. Do they make it? They still make it? No, 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 no. Hmm. I tried and tried and tried, but in his time, in his time, there is nothing that will be withheld from you as you serve the Lord. But it takes time, and it takes. It comes in his time, and you don't have to be worried if you don't have anything. There are things I don't have today. I don't want to go into all those things. You may not understand. But in this time, it makes all things relax. People have to be impressed with you. You have to have this. You have to have this. You have to have that. You have to be like this. No, please. It's a vexation of spirit. It's bringing tension into your life. You shouldn't marry anybody who forces you to, to things. Eh, this one has this. And why don't we have that? And why don't we do Everybody is doing that. No. We don't need it. Be humble. Be humble. One day it will be well. And I know somebody who had a uh, same. Uh, she had a... Uh, he was helping a husband for a long time. The husband didn't have any money. He was helping the husband. Then when the husband got money, he has forgotten his wife. Yeah, I also know such stories. I also know such stories of ladies who have been humble and have followed the man. And later, when he prospered, then they, for, she, they, they forgot her. 
You get it? I also know such stories. Isn't it? Are you following fear? Are you ruled by a demon? There are, there are more bad stories that you don't know. Should I tell you some more bad stories? Of more things you should have. I know somebody who died in the cathedral. Not the cathedral as we know it. But the, the Ophir cinema. The first wedding that was held there. The bridegroom died on Monday. Uh-huh. So maybe you shouldn't marry so that you don't die on Monday. Huh? Yeah. Saturday and then they died on Monday. Uh, yeah, maybe. You want more bad stories? Ah, uh, okay, then it's okay. So, <laughs> if you are thinking of bad stories and bad things, you get it. Then there are more, 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 more bad stories, frightening bad stories that will keep you away from serving the Lord. In his time. I said, in his time. He makes all things beautiful. All things will become beautiful in his time. I said it will become beautiful in his time. You don't like your beloved's hair. You don't like your beloved's... You say your beloved is too lean. Huh? <laughs> you don't like his nose. You don't like his tribal mark. It will get better. You don't like her food. It will, it, it, it will get better. I hope it will get better. <laughs> it will get better. Life will get better. I said it will get better. It will get better. I said it's going to get better. It will be better for you. In the name of Jesus. He will get better. He is some way we all know. But he will get better. He will improve. Have patience with me. I will pay thee all. said to me I don't like my wife I said why she's too fat this was a very slim girl he said she was fat I said this is fat you see some people they are very slim before they marry before they have children it's not going to be easy when they have children it's not going to be easy at all better take your pictures now so that we can see later you see them skinny like that walking around I tell you when it starts it's not going to be easy I was telling one husband, I said, why do you worry? He said, your, fat, your wife is too fat. Take her as a very soft cushion and just be happy. The very nice cushion that the Lord has given to you. <laughs> How, who can make that straight? Which he has made crooked. some people are also looking for that I remember one brother he was pointing he said have you seen that fine sister I said, which fine sister 
<laughs> that tall sister. I said, with tall sister. And he pointed to a very fat sister. I said, oh, yeah, okay. He said, yeah. After a while, I said, okay. So, that's what also somebody likes. It's going to get better. You know, it must get better in your mind. Yeah. It must get better in your mind, in your heart, in your eyes, in your spirit. He makes all things beautiful. He makes all things beautiful. What was not working will work. The church that didn't work will work. Your preaching that didn't work will work. Your ministry that didn't work will work. It will get better. It will get better. I know one brother who was, uh, you know, Pastor Kakra. He was the, once he was doing the uh, youth ministry in the church. Pastor Kakra and Kumasi. And it was okay, but it wasn't anything spectacular. It wasn't anything to write home about. It wasn't anything that I wasn't particularly impressed or I didn't feel that he was even really doing well. In fact, I I wonder if I felt he was doing well. Maybe I, I felt he wasn't doing well. You know, but today he's got one of the biggest churches. He oversees fifty churches. Yeah. So he makes all things beautiful in his time. Are you ready to wait for his time? Even if you press and it's not his time, it won't change. Huh? She talks too much. Gradually. To get better. Amen. A brother went and proposed to a sister. And he came to me. And he said, Charlie, he fine or he don't fine. He fine or he no fine. And and she said he said, You know fine eh? or he fine. I said, Oh, he fine. <laughs> no comment at this time. God has made all things beautiful. There is nobody who we can say no fine. He fine. It go fine. You see, all the ladies here, ladies, cover your head like this. Cover your head like this. Uh You see, if you cut off all your hair, that's how you look. No, no, cover your head like that. Uh And you are carrying granite on your head. You get it? Then we can really see. So you realize that all these granite sellers we have here, they have all, eh? Yeah. All these granite sellers here, if they were not to have permed their hair and done this and done that and done this and done that, they would not look the same. That's why every bride looks beautiful on the day. At least for that day, there. You will find. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you receiving wisdom? He, he, it's going to get better. Amen. My father told me this in many ways. And he was trying to tell me, listen, you don't have chairs, you don't have a fridge, you don't have a television. I don't have, I didn't have anything. In fact, the only thing I had were some towels. Yeah, towels. You know what a towel is? Bathing towel. I had some towels that I had kept. And that's what I had. No, I'm serious. I didn't have anything. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any. I just had faith. And I didn't know where I was going to go. And my father said I could stay at that room. I went to stay because the hotel wasn't full. 
And as I was in the hotel, he kept on trying to sell the hotel and lease the hotel with me inside the hotel. <laughs> so I was constantly for sale. I was constantly for sale. Yeah. One day, I was upstairs. I was in the bathroom and my father was sitting downstairs. And I heard him. He was talking to somebody who was trying to sell the place to or lease the place. And he was talking about, you see, my son. You see, my son. And I was saying, what is this man saying about me? He's adding me to the sale. <laughs> it's not been easy. Oh. You see, when you see somebody smile and it looks like everything is perfect. And you don't have an idea. And I didn't have anybody. There was nobody looking. I was looking up to nobody who was supporting me or trying to give me money or saying that you are doing the right thing. Everybody was saying you are doing the wrong thing. Everybody thought I was crazy. Especially my mother-in-law. My father-in-law. I remember when I wanted to have my wedding. We wanted to have our wedding at Rich Church. Rich Church. You know Rich Church is a nice church. And I used to go to church at Rich Church. When I composed that song, I used to go to church every Sunday. Have you heard me singing that song before? Oh, Sunday morning, I used to go to see my friends. Friends, oh, friends. I wore my best shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. <laughs> Let me finish singing. Let me finish singing my song. <laughs> If I or if I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I never knew I had to be born again. Born again. Born again. And then I, when I composed that song, you see, I was going to rich church. And I go, but I had been going there. So I wanted to go. So we went to see the chaplain, who was somebody very close family friend. So we would like to use this place as wedding. And then that was unfortunately my mother went, and then my father in law and my mother in law went. And he sat them down in his office. Let me talk to you about this boy. This is Jim Jones. That was the second person who called me a priest. Yeah. And a family friend. Very close family friend. And a lecturer. And he said, no. Is it Jim Jones? No. And he said, on one condition, that he'll close down that thing that he's doing. The lighthouse. That was the condition he gave them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I tell you that he's going to make... You see, some of you don't want shame. You don't want struggle. You don't want hassle. You don't want any losing. You don't want any dying. Nothing. You, you are just like how Jesus... When Jesus met Satan, and Satan said to him, If you want to... Just bow. I'll give you everything. No pain. Easy way. Just go this way. And that easy way is offered to all those who want to start out in God and start out in the ministry. And we often don't want to do it. We want, and there's no easy way. No shame. That's why I say you don't want to embrace the cross. You, you don't want to go to any town and any village. You don't understand. God wants to use you. God wants to raise you. And he's prepared. That's why we are here. That's why we are talking. And we keep talking. And I'll not stop talking. And I'll keep preaching until God himself speaks to you. That's what they call me. Look, I've been through a lot of pain. Oh. Jim Jones. Then, that was my, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. You see, when they see me now and my father-in-law gives me the respect that he gives me, I'm surprised. But they told him that I was a very dangerous person. Then, my sister-in-law, one of my wife's sisters, she told them, I, I, I hear he's into occult and other things like that. You see, because I was a very lean, Palestinian-looking type of brother. And I'm coming to marry. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't easy. So as I was marrying their daughter, they were not happy. 
You are not happy at all. And I'm standing in this uh, canteen preaching. Some few labasses and some nursing students saying that God. You see, you don't want it. Therefore, you don't want the glory. You don't want the crown. You don't want the rejoicing that comes after. You don't want to believe his word that in his time. And not in your time. In his time. He will make all things beautiful in his time. Do you believe in what I'm saying? Don't be deceived though. Without this side, you will never have the other side. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Run to it. Run to it and say, I like it. I want it. That's why this is when somebody wants to say, I say, yes, it's true. What you are saying, it is me. I'm the one and I'm even more than what you are even saying. I am that. That's all. Yeah. That's the end of the story. What again? I'm as bad as, even worse than you are thinking. I'm worse. Just pray for me. In his time, life will get better. But the youngest son could not wait for life to get better. Not many days after the camp, he took his journey to a far country. And there, wasted his substance on a different kind of living. Do you want to serve God? Do you want... My sister, what's your name? Dorothy. You want to serve the Lord? Huh? Do you have a beloved? Is he here? Where is he? Identify yourself. Mr. Sosu, are you taking her to a good place to serve the Lord? Anyako. Amen. Are you listening to me? In his time. I see some of you doing very well in the Lord. Yeah. I really see it. Do you see it too? I see it. You are like bright. I see something like light shining. Brightness. It's a spirit that is upon you. Brightness of doing well. Doing well. Doing well. Doing well. The brightness of the Lord is coming upon you. You shall do well. Yeah. Now let me tell you something. As you keep on walking there, there are people who despise you. Who hate you. Who want to hope to hear a bad story about you. Who want to find out something negative and say something bad about your life. But it will never happen in the name of Jesus. One day, I was talking to pastor and I was discussing something. And he told me of how he has been persecuted. And he told me about a certain man and the government officials and they were harassing. He told me they shaved my head. They put me in prison. They did this. And he said, one day, I was coming from London. So as I boarded the plane, it was Ghana Airways also. He said, as I boarded the plane, and he did like this, they were putting his dead body under the plane. And I sat in the plane, dead body was under the plane. The people who were harassing him and shaving his head and arresting him and harassing him, the body under and came to bury it in Ghana. Your enemies will be under dead in their coffins. Whilst you are still moving around serving the Lord. As they are planning to finish you and planning how your distraction will be. God will paralyze them and put them inside the coffin. Whilst you are walking on the plane, they will be carrying them into the, the under. He pointed this way like this. He put his body under. And I just had a quick vision of him walking on the plane as they were setting the coffin under. Waiting for the downfall. Why do you want the downfall of somebody? Why? What has he done to you? Huh? Why do you want somebody not to do well? Why are you thinking of bad things all the time? Is it a nice thing to think about bad things of people all the time? Always expecting a bad story, bad things. It's not good. We are going to live on and serve the Lord. I said we are going to carry on. Thank God for his blessings. I said when we were sending the first missionary in Africa. I think one of the first people was Andy and Chris. You know, Chris I think. People were thinking bad things were going to happen. God has been good. When you go there you will be proud of them. You will be proud. 
you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be touched at what the Lord has done and what the Lord is still doing. And He wants more of you. But you will not be qualified to go there unless you are qualified to go here. Yeah, if you are not ready to go to Jerusalem, you can't go to Judea. If you can't go to Judea, you can't go to Samaria. If you can't go to Samaria, you can't go to the uttermost parts of the world. You must be ready for nothing. You must give up everything in your heart. And God will give you everything back. You may be seated. Ha! Are you there? We are going to chapter 12 and we are only in chapter 3. Verse 12. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it nor anything taken from it, and God doeth it, that men should fear before him. That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been, and God requireth requireth that which is past. Notice verse 14. Whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. If God is doing, it's going to last. Make sure you do things that God is doing. Only the things that God is doing are going to last. May you do things that will last. May your marriage last. So I hope that it's God who is doing it. And not your hormones which are doing it. Mercy on the hormones. Eh? Brother said, oh, I just want to marry that fair sister. Is it just because of her fair color? Huh? No. It's when God doeth it that it shall be. For- this is the scripture that I use on my wedding card. I know that when God doeth a thing, it shall be forever. Yeah. If God does it, it will be forever. Is God doing it? I say, is God doing it? Is God doing it? If God is doing it, it will be forever. If God is not doing it, it will not be forever. May it be forever in the name of Jesus. I said, may it be forever in the name of Jesus. May it be forever in the name of Jesus. May your marriage be forever in the name of Jesus. May your ministry be forever in the name of Jesus. Will you have a lasting ministry? Uh, Or some of you, your shepherdorial and eldership thing is ending now. This is the end of it. There are so many of you, you were shepherds, there were shepherds like you. You see, that's what I say, one generating passes and another comes to pass again. Where did they go? There are a whole generation of shepherds. When they finished school and they came, we, haven't, we can't see them again. We can't find them. We don't know where they are. There are people who were elders and they are nowhere today. We can't see them. Huh? Is that the end of you? Or it wasn't God who was doing it. It was you who was just doing something and trying to, trying to belong to a certain group. Trying to be accepted. Trying to get the praise of men. But not that God was actually working through you. That's why it has fizzled out into thin air. That's why it has vanished and disappeared. I know that when God doeth a thing, it is a forever something. It's not just for this last three years or this last four years. But if God is doing it, it shall be forever. Singers, singers, stand up. If God is the one singing through you, (laughs) you are taking your microphones. I'm preaching to you. If God is the one singing through you, it shall be forever. But if it's not God who is doing it, it shall be for a short while. Short while, we will see that you say, hey, he appeared for a while and vanished like a vapor. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. It shall be forever. 
I said, for until you die, you, once you started preaching, you must preach till you die. When we bury you, we must put a collar on your coffin. Because a preacher is dead. A preacher is somebody who speaks the word of God has died. That is what you must die as a preacher. Once you started preaching as a shepherd and a pastor and whatever, you must die preaching all the way. If God is the one who was doing it, then it shall surely be forever. It shall be forever. Or oh, it wasn't God who was doing it. You were just doing something, some skirmishes and some exercises. So now you are a computer scientist. The other day I was looking for one of my pastors, somebody who had pastored me. And I said, where is he? They said, he told me he's in California. He's selling internet. And this is somebody who was a pastor of the largest church in the city. And they said, he's selling internet. <sighs> Will you be selling internet tomorrow? Selling emails. Selling software. Selling whatever. Uh, it wasn't God, you see. It was me, you see. I was the one pressurizing you. That's why you were doing the things you were doing. You see, isn't, isn't it? So I was the one calling you. Eh? Yeah, so the camp, I was, I was pushing you into things. Eh? The preaching. So I was, I was the one calling you. And that's why you stopped, isn't it? Better repent now. If you are doing things because of me, you are a fool. Better do things because God is the one doing it. And God is the one calling you. So that one day you will not stand somewhere and say that God, uh, the call to whatever is from God and the call to whatever is from, um, from, um, from me. I'm the one who made you be a shepherd. When God do it, I think it is forever. I said, it's forever. forever. It will not be that old one. I'm preaching now because, uh, you see, I wanted to marry Elder so and so. So that's why I was, I was flowing in the things. I wanted to marry Elder, Elder so and so. And so I was fairly flowing and I know that, you know, these elders, if you don't try to show yourself a little spiritual or something like that, you see that they will, like, they will leave you. And so, so I was flowing the thing, but it wasn't actually whatever. So I was trying to let them like me and so on. You know, the bishop, if the bishop doesn't like you, who easily marry this elder? He would tell them something secretly and tell them that they shouldn't marry me. Before you realize that, he will shuffle the relationship right now and you see that the thing is not working. So I tried to make myself richer, but actually I wasn't mercy so it wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't really genuine you see it was just the pressure of the people we were just flowing in so you weren't really a sister who loved the Lord you were just singing the song and lifting your hands so that one of the brothers would choose you I hear when you come to light us you'll get a beloved no and especially I hear as for the elders it wouldn't be bad to marry one of them because you see they are this and that and that and that shame on you shame on you come on there wake up walk out come on Ruby, walk out. <laughs> eh? Is it because of me that you are doing it? Then stop now. Say, hey, hey, as a bishop, when he preaches, you will feel like dying for God. Eh? This is a bishop, that's why he's preaching. It's very hot. When he's coming, he's you see that we are feeling that this is Baba after it, then we cool down. So. <laughs> so that's why now that I'm in London and I'm doing this and uh, this and that, you should see some of them in London. As if they never were elders. As if they never preached every Sunday. As if they were never shepherds. As if they, would, they never said, Pastor, I want to be full time. Pastor, I want to serve the Lord. Bishop, if you can please use me. Lord, uh, Pastor, if you can help me. I want to serve the Lord. You, you wonder. And when God do it, I think it is forever. It's God who is doing it. Nobody has to, sh- to supervise you and say, Come, well, why don't you come and do this and, and chase you around and follow you around. No, 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 no. Because God doeth it. If God is the one doing your singing, you will sing. I don't have to go, hey, why don't you people sing for the Lord? Why don't you do this? Hey, you should sing more. Why don't you practice? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Because if God, if God is doing it, I don't have to follow you up, chase you. Hey, hey, Pastor, I'll say I was going to marry somebody. I want to actually originally. Originally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, originally. <laughs> Originally, the person that I wanted to marry was not that sister, but because of how the church was going and certain things were going, I realized that she was more acceptable to you and to others. Acceptable to me? Don't bring yourself at all. Something that you will marry doesn't have to be acceptable to me. You are the one going to eat it in the house. If you don't like it, I can't do anything about it. If God doeth it, it shall be forever. 
it shall be forever. May your ministries be forever. May your shepherdorial work that you have begun, may it be forever. May your eldership work, may it be forever. May I come and find you as an old elderly lady. Still preaching. Ladies, I one day, one day, I want to see that you are standing this height. Your children are also this height. And as you finish preaching, your daughter, you know, who has also grown up, she has breast, everything, she's a grown up, she also comes to stand and she also preaches just like you. And you say that, ah, my daughter, who is in the university, she preaches, you know, I preach and she preaches. I say, I preach and she preaches. By that time, you'll be menopausal and your, your daughter will not be menopausal. Your face will be wrinkled, but her face will be glowing fresh, you know, more delicious than you are at that time. That she'll be preaching and you also preach. Because God is the one who was working in you right from Lagos, UCC, USD, all of it was God who was working in you. And that's why it's going on and on and on and on forever. When God doeth it, it is forever. Nobody has to supervise you. Say, do you know that you are a pastor? Do, 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 do you remember you said you were called? Larry, do you remember you once said you were this and that? I have to sit down with you to discuss whether you can remember all these things. I mean, why do I have to discuss with you whether you can remember? Do you remember once you were sitting in the office and you said this and you said that and you said you wanted to do this and you want? Why do I have to talk so that? Is it not God who is doing it? Then maybe it wasn't God. You were just following the pressure of the people. Just trying to impress. God is your crowd and these are your friends. Whether to just flow. Actually, you see, it wasn't full time that I was at. I was wanted to do this a programming international, uh, international T's. What do you call it? IT's. International T's. So, but because of how the preaching came at that camp, so I realized I was a full time, but it wasn't my original aim. <laughs> Don't let me pressurize you into anything. If you feel that I'm pressurizing you, please withdraw. Don't do anything because of me. Do things because of God. If God is doing, do if He's not doing, just stand back. Step back. What do you think about that? When God doeth a thing. When God doeth a thing. That's why some of you, some of the churches you started will not be there in three years' time. Because it wasn't God who was doing it. You were doing it with your strength. You use patapa and physical strength. To try and mobilize people and organize. You don't pray. You are not a spiritual person. You just use the name of lighthouse and other things to mobilize and to organize. But there's no spiritual, there's no anointing. That's why after some short time, it will just evaporate. Like that. Patapa. <laughs> but when God doeth. I say when God doeth. When God doeth your marriage, it will be forever. So don't go and do it for yourself. Some, some people, they have now moved to a certain scripture. When, said that, uh, uh, um, when a man has found a wife, he has found a good thing and obtained favor from the Lord. And some are now beginning to say, well, if the man is not going to find a wife, the, good, the man is not going to find a good thing. The good thing is going to find a man. <laughs> it's time for the good thing to begin to look for the man. Arise! And he arose and he took his journey. You are now looking for a good thing. <laughs> In the far country. But if God is the one bringing... You see, when God brings the man, eh, you will see that he himself has brought the man. A real man who loves you, you don't have to sleep with him for him to marry you. Love is not sex and sex is not love. Has never been, will never be. Sex is something animals do. It, it, that means almost nothing. You jump up and down, up and down, up and down, and it's finished. That's all. <laughs> like a frog. I mean, dogs, animals, cats, cows, all of them are doing it. It's not, it's not a new special thing that you are doing. It's just something. <laughs> love is different from sex. May you have the love of God in you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's move on. God requireth that which is past. Amen. 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 God requireth that which is past. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God requireth that which is past. In other words, God is requiring what has been done. That's what he requires from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you there? You are there? Verse 16. 
And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. That wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness. That iniquity was there. And I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. And I said in my heart, concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. <laughs> huh? <laughs> are you reading with me? For that which we befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. I told you just now about sex, you know. <laughs> Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go unto one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? <laughs> All right. Look at verse 18. That God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Now, it's a very important thing for you to see that you are a beast. Huh? You don't think you are a beast then? Eh? You see, the animal kingdom, you get it? Is similar to we we are we are very much animals. <laughs> oh, you, you don't know that. You know that women have sex. Some women have sex with dogs, huh? And horses. This <laughs> is a marvelous thing. Now, that beast in you. It's very important that you control it. Because it's there. Even though you are saved. There is a beast in every man. Yeah. How many have seen yourself behaving in a beastly way before? Please, I just want you to raise your hand. What, 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 do, what do you mean by that? Can I call you to come and explain? <laughs> Because the way you all raise your hands is like I don't know what 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 you are what beastly behavior you have. <laughs> huh? It is marvelous. I said it's marvelous. That beast can keep us from doing the will of God. Paul said that I, I desire after God after the inward man. He said that which I would do, I don't do. You get it? He said I keep under my body. I keep my flesh under control. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Are you there? Yeah. Save us from the beast. Huh? How many want to pray that God should save us from the beast? How many are scared of the beast? Is this scary? <laughs> I tell you. When, when a, a horse is brought to um, a pack of horses are uh, moving together and another male horse comes. They fight until one dies. And then the other takes and leads all the females. It's not easy. That's how we are. Jealousy, fighting, quarrels. You see the cocks fighting. Alligators fighting. Lions fighting. We just want to eat, satisfy our flesh. Hmm? See the animals doing things, having sex. Even sometimes we go lower than beasts. I've not yet seen a homosexual dog. Yeah? I've not seen a homosexual frog. A homosexual cats. I have cats in my heart. None of them is homosexual. <laughs> but we are lower even. We've gone beyond the beast. Have you seen a 
goats doing wedding before. But they sleep with each other, isn't it? All the time. So when we do that, we're just following the way of the beast. No wedding and we sleep. Bring your vagina, I bring my penis, and then we just work. <laughs> You don't understand what I'm saying. eh? (laughs) Are you sure you understand what I'm saying? (laughs) I said there's a beast in us, oh. We fight, fight. I tell you, there's only one chance we have to keep this. Because I say we are less than. Look, I was in Amsterdam. See postcards. They're taking the picture of genitalia. That's a postcard from Amsterdam with rings, earrings stuck onto the genitals of males and females. Different pictures. That's a postcard. So you write, dear so and so and so and so and so and so. God bless you. Then you, they post it to you. Sex shops. You slot and you look through like that and you see them live, having sex live. Uh, I was taken to a place you have all the women are in glass cages. Different, different, different types. White girls, black girls, whatever. There's a special place for Ghanaians. Yeah, all the Ghanaian ladies, because they are all wearing pants. Pants and bra or just pants or so whatever. They are there. So if you come, you choose. Okay, I, I would like this one. So okay, so you come, then you go to the room. Just like you choose food. That's awesome, human beings, working. We have some of them in the church. <laughs> and some of us, we haven't done it, but we are thinking it. It's in our mind. In fact, we, are even, we are even thinking that it would be nice. <laughs> and some of us would like to marry a lot of people if we had a chance. Some of us wish we were Muslim so that we could marry three, four, five. <laughs> and that beast keeps us from serving the Lord God should help us Amen. when you see somebody's beast has woken up and is performing don't condemn him because yours is sleeping <laughs> by grace that yours hasn't woken up because if yours were to wake up it's not going to be easy it's not going to be easy when you see somebody divorcing be quiet because when yours wakes up and the beast wakes up in everybody in the house it's not going to be easy tell somebody it's not going to be easy may God help you listen your only chance is the hidden man the hidden man is the last resort against the beast the hidden man is the spiritual man You see, man was originally a spirit because God is the father of spirits. And if he's the father of spirits, then it means that the children of the father are spirits. So we were originally spirits. And we had these bodies which were available, but they were not controlling. But when the spirit died, do you understand? When he said, when you eat this, you will die. When the spirit dies, what happens when somebody dies? If my father is dead, my father is buried. One, two main things. Number one, we don't see him anymore. And then number two, he has lost any influence he has on me. Only historical. But he has no present contribution to whatever whatever is happening, even or what I'm doing, or anything at all. He's quiet and he's away. So your spirit, that is in you. When you died spiritually, your spirit was cut off quiet. And sent far. So it's now, that's why we can't see your spirit. And it has almost no influence on a man. So when a man is born again, the dead thing is, it comes alive. You understand? And even though it comes alive, it still has very little influence. The main thing that is leading us is the beast. That's why some of you were having sex when you were 13 years old. 
than 14 years old and even younger. Only God knows where you've come from to be sitting here. If the beast had continued to have his way, would it have been easy here at all? Would it have been easy? But when you got born again, the spirit came alive. And then as you kept feeding it, it kept growing. And when it keeps growing, it starts to control the beast. The beast can no longer dominate. The beast is this outward man with the five senses. Very, very unruly and disobedient and very some way animal. And so the spirit is now, so the more the word comes in, the more the hidden man gains ascendancy and gains control over the beast. And so you, you see that a spiritual man is different from a carnal man. A carnal man is someone who is beastly. And a spiritual man is someone who is dominated by the spirit. The hidden man of the heart. The inner man. The man, a real, is a very real person. And the more you feed him with the word, the more he grows. That's why like newborn babes long for the spiritual milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Not by prayer, but by the word. That's why you have people who are very prayerful, but they are not spiritual. And they are more beastly than spiritual. So another word for carnal is beastly. And the more spiritual you are, the more this thing is less, less controlling, less influence on your life. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And that's why I tell you, all of us, we need the word. We need the books. We need not just to have... Look, let me tell you, all of you who think you've read my books, you don't know what is in the books. Now, I want to tell you, you see, I don't, I'm not saying this in the negative, but you have, most of you are very, very, very far from where I am spiritually and in the ministry. And even though you've read my book, you don't really know what I am. You see, I know that because I read other people's books. Someone like Rick Joyner, like the final quest, I realize that you can read something and you think you've read it. And you think you know what it is. But actually, because I realized by looking at people who say they've read my books, I realized that they don't really know what is there and it hasn't really affected their lives. I realized that made me go and read that book more. Because I realized that when you think you know what somebody has written. You actually don't know it at all. So that made me go and read this book seriously. More. I've taken it more seriously. I always have and I look. Both the final quest and other books. I always have a rejoiner book with me now. All the time. All the time. All the time. You need to grow more spiritually. If you are spiritual, and what I'm saying will mean so much to you. When I talk about giving your life to the Lord, for me to live is Christ, to die. Is oh, these are things that is only a spiritual man. But a beastly, carnal man cannot accept such things. And the more spiritual you are, the more the beast will lose control over your life. You will know that this beast must die so that life can go on. Look at the verse again. What does it say? I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, the state of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. It's important for you to see. Yeah. You will deliver babies just like animals do. I've delivered, a, I mean, I've been at the labor ward when a cow was delivering. And I've been at the labor ward where many, many different women were delivering. It's the same thing. I was in the labor, uh, not the labor ward, labor stable when a cow was delivering throughout the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we had to pull the legs of the in there. We had to pull the car out, the cow out. It wasn't easy that night. Cow was struggling through the night. Ooh, 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 oh, but it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> and the same way a woman also delivered, just like we're like animals. When you go to the labor was it's like a butcher's. Uh, what do you call you? I become like an animal, especially at Kolibu. <laughs> Are you listening to me? That men might see they're concerning the estate of the sons of men, that men might see that they themselves are beasts. Some of you, your nasty behavior, eh? some of you, you are, you are eh? <laughs> is the beast. But let the hidden man come, so the beast will be under control. Everybody has a dog in his house. Take it, your flesh is like your dog. You can chain it. You can chain it. It will be very restricted in your house. I've got dogs in my house, they are very restricted. Throughout the whole day, they are. Under restriction. 
they are released in the night and early in the morning they have, have trained them early in the morning if i'm working in a 4 a.m 5 a.m they come to their cage themselves they know that it's time for imprisonment some of you it's your flesh that is leading you against the will of god yeah in fact most of us brothers let me tell you uh, it's the you see like you see a sister say this brother is proposing to you look at the brother Zoom. You scan. No. No. You know what you are looking at? The beast in you is looking at another beast. And you are saying, is it an attractive beast? You understand? You don't even know the spirit of the person and the heart of the man and the hidden man. Whether the hidden man is growing or whether he is there. All you want to do is assess the beast. Concerning the estate of the sons of men, that they might see them, that they themselves are beasts. When Hitler was killing human beings, it's even more, you can even see, he will put them all in a big chamber like all of us here and make everybody take off his clothes. Every, the, you take off all your clothes, your rings, everything, you put it down there. And then you stand in the room. Everybody stuck 100% naked. All the families, the Jews, and everybody standing there naked. Men, women, children, everybody. And then they, the soldiers will go out and they close the door. And you'll be standing there wondering what it is. I read an account of somebody who worked there. He said, then they put on the gas from there. Isn't that? And that gas, what it does is that it strangulates you. And you feel like going higher to get oxygen. So what happens is that everybody starts to scramble upwards, trying to climb on each other. So when they... The, the, the finally the doors are open and everybody is there. What you see is you see a mountain like this of bodies going up to the top. Everybody's scrambling. You now there's some oxygen upstairs. Totally naked everywhere. A mountain of bodies. White dead bodies. And he killed six million of them like that. And they carry them all like meat and they go and put them. He did experiments on them trying to find out about anesthesia. They use the listen to see whether it works. They will inject you and then they'll cut you and see whether you feel pain. You don't feel pain and so on. They're experimenting with the, with, the, with the drug. They use skin of people to make lampshades. Lampshades. You see like how you buy a lampshade made out of leather. When you say leather skin. They, you see, they turn men into animals. And slaughtered them systematically until they are slaughtered. Some of them, they put them all together and shoot all of them. And some wouldn't die. And they'll be under the dead bodies. And they'll cover them. And then... The person will wake up and come out. That's how come we have the stories. Do you see? Shot, but you didn't die. Maybe shot you somewhere, but you didn't die. You didn't really die. All naked. And you see people with their pot bellies and everything. Fat, fat, fat people. Everybody dead. It's not easy. Concerning the ethics of the sons of men, that they themselves might see that they are what? Beasts. And as long as that beast dominates you, you will never be much used to God. You will be a drinker, fornicator, smoker, wicked, whatever. Are you listening to me? You are there? Concerning the estate of the sons of men, that they, might, they themselves might know that they are what? Beasts. You must know it. You must know that we are primed to be like animals, I tell you. We fight. We fight. We are selfish. We fight. We like food, sex, drink, lions. And when that thing takes over, that is why Christians end up breaking. So that's why you need a spiritual person. And you yourself need to be spiritual. So that you can move on. Amen. You can see things from a spiritual point of view. The hidden man is your last chance. I say your hidden man. That's why I want you to be Bible readers. Can you be Bible readers? I say I want you to be Bible readers. And God is going to bless you. Stand to your feet everybody. Verse 22. Wherefore, I perceive... You thought I was giving you a break. Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. For that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Amen. All right. Lift your hands to the Lord. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more. 
of the sons of men that they themselves might see that they are beasts. And I keep it under control lest that by any means after I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway. Mercy, forgive. How many plan to be castaways? Save me Jesus from being a castaway. I want everybody to take a chain in the realm of the spirit and chain that beast. But the beast wants to move around. If you allow the beast, it will spoil. It will spoil everything. I tell you, if you allow the beast, I wanna be more like. Now, every beast has its tendency. Some beasts, I have a dog that likes jumping on me. And another that likes running away from me. I have cats which like sleeping on the roof of the house. And they like coming inside and behaving as they do. Every beast has his way of going about things. Ladies, your beasts are chemical. Your beast is controlled by chemicals. One sister wrote to me, she said, when I think logically, this is the right thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But when my beast comes, I completely set that thing aside and I become totally different. She said, I don't know if I'm two people in one. How many have wondered whether you are two people in one before? Brothers, your beast is usually a sexual beast. 
Brothers, how many have realized that your beast it lies running towards the sexual side? Raise your hand if you've realized that your beast is at, it, it lies jumping in a sexual direction. Sisters, how many have realized that your beast is a chemical beast? Emotional. A very correct person. See that sudden the thing is going this way. Mercy. Lift your hand and take authority over the beast in the name of Jesus. Shambhala badabakaba. Lift your hand and ask Him to save you. Save us, Lord. Save us from the beast, Lord. Give us the strength, Lord. To dominate the beast, Lord. Save us from the beast, Lord. Save us from the beast, Lord. Manko palamala shembe de kemerele bandaride. Melabas sumbole kemerele benele bene. Rembendele bere kemo shemba la babande. Reke surumande Save us from the beast, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your blessing. For your help, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We believe you have been blessed by the powerful teaching by Bishop Dag Heward Mills. For further information on Bishop Heward Mills' tapes and books, please write to Bishop Dag Heward Mills, P.O. Box KB114, Kolebu, Accra, Ghana, or call 21 Six six two zero five five, fax zero two one six six eight nine three four. God richly bless you.